hi guys welcome to my youtube channel so this is a part two of um property investment or investments right i was still talking about an agent and the dream team which is number four of the tips that you need to put in mind while getting yourself interested in accommodating no property investments okay so i was talking about the things which you need to keep in mind and i read the list it's on the previous video so um just make sure that you check it okay and make sure that your your um your agent is registered with a state agency affairs board okay um they have to be issued i think an annual certificate that they have to put publicly and it has a number which you can also check against the board if the person is indeed um, registered okay so yeah you really have to make sure that you have someone who have your best interest at heart these people also know the market they know the area in which they operate so it's very good that you make a relationship with that person and also start a long-term relationship with them right like i said share your vision with them and then they start respecting you because they know they're not only dealing with you um as a once off thing right and they're important because they also help you to sign the otp to understand what you're signing on the otp guys read your otp otp is not a standard contract in as much as it looks the same all the time but there is terms and conditions they that you need to be make, making sure that you're agreeing with right so if your agent is good enough they will make sure that all the what coc certificates are there i think it's compliance certificates of compliance all the plans are there so that you buy really a valid a valid house that you know that you can also sell in times of selling you also have bond originators those people are important in as much as you can go and find financing uh from banks and finance financial institutions without these people i find them very important because they give you convenience right you don't have to deal with the paperwork paperwork of appli applying you just have to provide them with the required information which most of the time is your pay slip your expenses your liabilities and assets right so they compile everything go to financial institution especially banks and then they go and request for finance for you uh, make sure that you don't only ask for finance on the big five banks, which is what most of the bond originators do. Also ask for financing on the um, on the other providers, on the alternatives, um, like your SA Home Loan, you know, there's the rest of them. You can go and search them. So make sure that they ask multiple financial institution for this so that you can guess you can get the best interest rate and you can get the best bond overall also guys look after your credit score because your credit score will be the determination of the behavior of your money behavior which is also the determination of your credit score and therefore the interest rate that you get right so make sure that in that six months while you're still planning while you're still looking while you're still searching deciding on the place you're also focusing on growing your credit score okay another thing that you need to keep in mind is that financial institution most of the time calculate the bond that you can get using 30 percent meaning that they can only give you up to 30 percent of your income right let's say for an example if you earn 100 rand uh, per month they can only give you a bond of three rand per month right up to three rand per month okay so that's how also you can think about it on the potential bond in which you can get right um yep so we also have conveyancing attorneys so you're most likely to work with two attorneys the one who is appointed by the bank to register your property to your bond and there is also um a, another attorney which helps you to register the the property to your name okay so um the one that um registered the bond against your property that is appointed by the bank 
you can negotiate also you can negotiate in both of them especially if you're a private banker i was so surprised on my last purchase when i was told that i'm gonna get 25 percent discount up front because i was a private banker so make sure that if you're a private banker you're benefiting um at the maximum uh with those um benefits that they mention right so you pay a lot to be a private banker so you better benefit from that however even if you're not a private banker always ask for a discount right so the one that is appointed by the seller who register the property against your name is also a prop a, a person who's in business right so lawyers actually charge a fee that is like a recommend they charge maximum of the recommend recommended fee by the law society right however they know that they can you know negotiate 15 to 30 percent discount for you if you don't ask good for them but if you do they can give you you know 15 and 30 percent so make sure you ask if you don't ask you always at a loss but if you ask and they say no you lose nothing as well right you also have a letting agent on your dream team a letting agent is someone who will manage the property for you especially if you're having a student accommodation guys you cannot have 15 students in one house and expect to have a piece in your nine to five if you're still working you need to consider hiring a letting agent someone who will actually manage this property for you someone who will actually get rental at uh, new tenants select new tenants and um collect rental for you okay so some of the things that these people do some of their duties will be regular inspection in the house renewal of the leases management of assets that you have in the house and selecting and managing the tenants okay so they will help you also to manage small quarrels that can have that can happen within the student accommodation because i think that's where the demand of a letting agent is i personally did not want to to have one from the get-go while i was looking for student accommodation i thought i would manage it myself but now thinking about it i could not have done it without my letting agent and big shout out to him because really he's good at it i'm, I'm so grateful to have him right last but not least it's under which legal entity are you planning on buying this property right you can buy it as a company you can buy it as a natural person meaning as an individual you can buy it as a trust right so you have to know the pros and cons of each and every one of them you can actually mix company and a trust together so please reach out to your financial planner so that they can help you to do estate management to see how you can best protect your asset right one thing to be mindful of is that if you are if you are buying as a business you're most likely to get you know up to 80 percent of the bond and if you stretch it maybe to 95 percent uh, most of the time it's difficult for the banks to give you 100 percent uh funding um even when you are a first-time buyer if you're buying as a company however as an individual even for your second bond you're most likely to get 100 percent. but there's benefit for either one of them even buying as a trust there's you know there's benefits but also there's also disadvantage like on a trust you pay you pay high tax and also as a business, you know, as a business, you have a lot of tax deduction. You know, there's a lot. So please reach out to your accountant, to your tax practitioner to understand which is the best for you to buy this property on. Don't decide after because if you buy as an individual and then you soon want to transfer it as to a corporation, you will pay transfer cost. And if it's at a later stage when the, the property has already accumulated, uh, capital gains has already appreciated in value, you will have to pay a uh, tax. And just if it's a, a, a private residence, at least there is um, tax exemption, I think is of two million only if it's a private or it's a primary residence for you. If you are making any money out of that, then it's tax it's capital gain tax for you for transferring uh from one from you to another to a company 
okay goodbye thank you guys for watching if you like this video give me flowers make sure you like comment and subscribe cheers